Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. We're looking at a debate by Mike Lacona and Abel Pina or Pina or Pinar. <laughs> P-I-E-N-A-A-R. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. And uh, we've got a little treat of a debate uh, for you today. So without further ado, we're just going to hear a bit of the debate, a link to the debate, watch the debate. You will enjoy, I promise you. Okay, let's just listen to a few snippets of the debate. And then I'll tell you how the debate went. But we'll, uh, we'll, in, we'll elaborate on that when, when we get there. Okay, so I think let's begin without further ado. Um, I'm going to introduce Michael Conner to you. Mike has a PhD in New Testament Studies from the University of Pretoria. He serves as Research Professor of New Testament at Southern Evangelical Seminary and has external... ...what no Paul was telling the truth. There are a couple different ways of doing it. Let me just give you one that I, I can explain pretty quickly. Um, there were two guys who were probably disciples of the apostles. Yep, some of the apostles had disciples later on. Peter had one named Clement of Rome, and John had one named Polycarp. And so if Paul was preaching uh, in the essential doctrines, the gospel doctrines, different than, differently than what Peter and John were, then we would expect Clement and Polycarp to chide and correct them on the matter. Well, when we read First Clement, written by Clement, and Polycarp's letter to the Philippian church, we find something very interesting. Clement refers to the blessed Paul and places Paul on par with his mentor Peter. Polycarp quotes from Paul's letters twice and refers to them as part of the sacred scriptures. And then he says, and I quote, that Paul uh, uh, taught the word of truth accurately and reliably. Their spirit leaves the body and goes to be with Christ in heaven, existing there as a disembodied spirit. When Jesus returns, he brings us back with him as spirits, put us back in our, mort in our bodies, resurrect. Dr. Albert Pinar is an agnostic, philosopher, and writer. He is the director of the Center of Contemporary Spirituality. He studied theology at the University of Pretoria. Eventually, not long after I left the church, I came to a place where I still believed completely in God, but understood the Bible in a more metaphorical, less literal sense. The Bible seemed to me to contain inspired literature in that it could inspire true and useful thinking about God, but it was still the product of human hands and contained all the kinds of mistakes that any human undertaking will be interpreting and presenting the Bible or Paul um, as his only proof of the resurrection. All I hear and see is myth. And other church fathers like Irenaeus, I, I, I think that's wrongly pronounced, but Aeneas, also doesn't really inspire me with confidence. People that at that time really believed that the resurrection did happen. But it was then a time of myth, legends talking donkeys, witches and wizards, the stuff Walt Disney movies are made of. Because just look at... So, um, I'll just give you uh, a quick overview of the debate. Basically, Mike Lycona is an evangelical. He gave uh, five basic facts of the Apostle Paul uh, was an early source uh, witness to the resurrection of Christ. Um, the philosopher, uh, uh, I think it's Pinar or someone, Abel Pinar, he uh, basically said, well, the Bible's not iner inerrant. Uh, there's loads of mythology, contradictions in the Bible. Uh, it's not co philosophically coherent. Uh, we can't do psych sci uh, we can't do uh, uh, scientific uh, investigation in this resurrection of Christ, so it's not open to uh, verification. Um, the whole problem, uh, I think, with um, the philosopher that I had who debated Lycona, I felt that he was using a lot of Bart Ehrman, um, and I think that. Uh, it, that was a weakness. Um, as for the contradictions in the Gospels, they can be dealt with generally. Uh, the Gospels are just looking at things from a different perspective in each Gospel. Uh, the mythological issues that the philosopher brought up, uh, it talked about that Jesus was just part of the Greek dying and rising gods, but um, it's interesting that the Gospels are uh, well embedded in first century Judaism, which we keep mentioning to skeptics, but they don't listen. Uh, he mentions uh, Apollonius um, as a type of Christ, but that was 300 AD. Um, 
the idea that uh, the Gospels, uh, the Bible was written in a pre-scientific age doesn't mean that the Gospels or, or uh, the Bible is not true if it's based on good testimony. And that's the issue. I think it doesn't matter whether you believe in God or not. Is it based on good testimony? I mean, that that's the basis of all knowledge, isn't it? If we do scientific investigation, it's still based on testimony. It's based on the, the wider community of scientists who have done the peer reviews to the hypotheses in question, whatever that might be. Whatever part of knowledge we're looking at, it comes down to is it good testimony? And if we have something that is good testimony, then it can tell us knowledge. And we have good testimony of the disciples uh, of, of the early church uh, and the apostles that tell us that they saw Christ rise from the dead. Um, it's good testimony uh, because why would they lie? What, what, what purpose would they have for lying? It's early sources, etc. Uh, you might say, well, why don't you believe in people who say they've seen the Virgin Mary rise from the dead and visions? Well, the the question is, is it based on good testimony? If it is, then it's good evidence. Um, one might object, but say, well, you've got presuppositions of theism um, concerning your position, and that's why you believe Jesus Christ rose from the dead. It doesn't matter whether you believe in God or not. The thing is, what is the historical information, and is it good testimony? But everybody has a presuppositions, and they will influence how you understand the information. And there are two dialogues that we need to remember. There is the factual context of, uh, sorry, the context of the facts in hand. Every facts in history have a context, and the context will give us some kind of understanding of how to interpret the facts. Uh, so, the, as Anthony Fleur said, uh, the Christian faith comes through the Jewish context. And if you believe the Jewish context, it's a theistic God. And that will be your context to, uh, to interpret, and the Jewish text, to interpret the resurrection of Christ. That will be how you interpret if you come at it from one position. If you come at it from a secular position, you might use the Greek context. But your context in the historical realm will have an influence on the interpretation of the facts. But also your own um, your own uh, historical, uh, cultural, philosophical positions will play a role in the interpretation of text. You might say, well, uh, I don't have any uh, presuppositions. Well, that just shows you're naive. Uh, a lot of the rationalists that I've talked to uh, are absolutely dogmatically, absolutely clear that they have no presuppositions, that they are just open skeptics. But when you talk to them, they are so dogmatic about their scepticism. You hear in quotes these kind of words, no ancient text can tell us whether a miracle happened or not. Really? That is dogmatic. If it's based on good testimony, why can't it tell us something about the supernatural or whether a resurrection has taken place? So, I have really enjoyed this debate and I hope that you watch it yourself. And uh, it's good to be here today and I hope to see you in the future. As you can see, I'm 100% better now. My material is, is more scholarly again. And uh, I'm sorry that I've not been well the last couple of years and I've made some uh, crazy videos. But uh, I'm getting back to the scholarship and uh, back to preaching the Word of God. And I thank you for your patience and your kindness to me uh, from the skeptic community and from those who have tolerated me on YouTube. So thank you and take care. I hope this has been stimulating. Please give me your thoughts and questions and discussion. And uh, see you around. Have a good evening and have a good day.